Hi everyone, welcome to Kellogg Garden's YouTube channel. I'm Kim, and today I am going to show you how you can attract pollinators to your garden. But first, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can always be notified when Kellogg has a video like this to share with you. Pollinators such as bees like these, butterflies and hummingbirds are moving pollen from one flower to another so that the plants can produce fruits and seeds. Over 75% of all flowering plants are pollinated by insects and other animals. And pollinators are a very important part of a healthy ecosystem. There's so many varieties of dahlias in my garden. And there's so many to choose from, but many just have too many petals for the pollinators to access the pollen and nectar that's found in the center of the flower. So uh, these um, open center dahlias do great for feeding the pollinators. If you are looking to attract pollinators, you want to stay away from varieties like pom-poms um, because their petals are just too close together. So daisies are so amazing to me. The center disc of a daisy is made up of hundreds of tiny flowers that produce pollen and nectar. And this design is ideal for attracting pollinators. Snapdragons are such a perfect flower for bees. The bell shape of the petals is adapted perfectly for the bees just to buzz in and out. And I've read that they deliberately release a scent during the most active hours of the day for the bees. Bees and butterflies absolutely love zinnias. Every time I go out to the garden, the area is just filled with bees. They can be planted in succession, so you can stagger the growing season. Cosmos are one of my favorite annuals. They bloom from late spring until the first frost. This annual attracts birds, bees, butterflies, and moths. And what I really love about it is the more that you cut, the more they will produce. You can grow a variety of plants for pollinators that'll bloom at different times throughout the year, and that'll help provide continuous food for the pollinators. I am <laughs> chasing a butterfly right now. You can see it right here on the phlox. Now the phlox is needing to be deadheaded big time, um, but it doesn't stop the butterflies. Marigolds are an annual flower that are amazing companion plants. They repel pest insects like cabbage moth and they attract butterflies and moths. As you can see here, uh, my Jupiter's beard is very attractive to butterflies. I have read that it's more uh, aggressive in Washington, Oregon, and California, but I just really keep up on my dividing and I haven't had any problems. I fill my containers with salvia, lantana, verbena, and herbs to attract all the pollinators I can. Fuchsias are a beautiful perennial that likes shade more than sun and attracts hummingbirds and bees. Asters are a perennial daisy-like bloom that attract butterflies and bees. Poppies are considered an excellent pollen source and they're open petals are a great invitation for the bees to come in and collect their pollen. Lavender is a great perennial to attract pollinators. There are three types, Spanish, French, and English, and they attract bees, but they also repel mosquitoes and flies. Black-eyed Susans are a native wildflower that belongs to the group of flowers called cone flowers. They bloom in our garden um, mid to late July until the first frost of the season. And the brown center is made up of a lot of individual flowers containing nectar and pollen. And um, bees love this flower, but butterflies are especially attracted to it because 
the flower it has a sturdy platform where they can land this blazing star is one of my favorite most unique flowers in the garden it's tall fuzzy spears are huge attractors to butterflies bees and hummingbirds and bloom from july to august this cone flower, also called Echinacea, is such a great perennial for pollinators. It blooms for us early summer through mid-fall. The birds even love eating the seeds from the spent flowers, so I try not to deadhead them. Obviously, you can see here they attract bees and butterflies as well. I hope this gave you an idea of what kind of flowers you can grow in your garden to attract pollinators like this. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And if you liked this video, which I hope you did, make sure you tap the like button. Until next time, happy gardening.